guys, this is Dr. Chris Collier. I'm up at Elite Chiropractic and Performance. Uh, we are located in Chesterfield, Missouri. Today's video, I want to go over just a general way of how I would foam roll the spine. Uh, foam rolling is something that is done, whether it's in a fitness setting or a rehab setting, and we lots of people like to foam roll their spine. Now, I feel like we need to get a little more specific with why we're foam rolling the spine. So I like to marry things that I'll find clinically with a patient. So patients that are a little bit more kyphotic or rounded in their thoracic spine especially, I'm probably going to have them foam roll in a way to extend or open them up. However, not everybody's kyphotic. A lot of pitchers or overhead athletes are actually really flat in their upper back. So I'm not gonna drive them into more extension. I'm going to try to create a little bit more flexion. And so based on what you have going on personally, that's kind of how I would recommend you foam roll. Now, the other thing I'll mention with foam rolling is always add breathing with it. If you can do targeted uh, conscious breathing in and out, that's gonna help a lot with what your rib cage and your thoracic spine does. So to start, you know, I, I usually do a general, you know, scan of the area and I'll say that I usually don't foam roll my lower back or my lumbar spine. I keep it kind of this mid to lower back all the way up to here, your thoracic spine essentially. So I'll do a general scan, you know, I kind of get into a position and just relax and just kind of go up and down, knocking the cobwebs or the dust off the spine a little bit. You might get some pops and cracks, which is absolutely normal as long as there's no pain. Now, foam rolling for extension, this, this is typically what most people I think do when they foam roll, whether they realize it or not. But I usually, I'll cradle my head from behind and I'll start to, it's like a reverse crunch at different areas. So for me, right at this area, this TL junction is always a problem area for me. So what I do, I actually get my butt on the floor and I just kind of reverse curl here, keeping my ribs down. And so it's like I'm hinging over the foam roller. And then I can work my way up, kind of find different areas. Now when I want to include breathing, you know, all I do is I'll take an inhale in and then exhale. And then inhale. All the way down. If I want to add my upper body, I can do some shoulder flexions here. So as I get into position, I can do one or both arms. So by bringing your arms overhead, keeping my head in neutral, so not letting it go in one direction or the other. I'm also extending the spine, but working on some lat extensibility, which is important. So that would be extension. For flexion, it's similar. I use a lot of head movement. So in the upper back, I'll actually let my, my upper back relax on the foam roller and I gently just pull my head up. And then as I do that, as I flex my head, I'm trying to round my back. And so as I kind of find different areas that might need that, depending on the individual, I'll have them foam roll in that fashion. So this isn't like a perfect way to get flexion, but you're at least getting your back in position of flexion and then rolling it. So we're just trying to loosen some joints up like that. Again, work breathing. And obviously we look for no pain. Now one thing I didn't mention is rotation. So oftentimes our, our mid to upper back is stiff, whether it's extension or flexion. But we also don't rotate very well. So very important for rotational athletes like golfers or just people that like to sit at a desk a lot is you're gonna lose that ability. So with rotation, again, I can cradle my head here and I can just side by side, just rotate ever so slightly. You're not gonna get a ton of feeling of like a stretch or movement with this. It's real subtle spinal movement. Or what I like to do is same thing with the arms, keep head here, I'll rotate. So my head's kind of following it ever so slightly and I'm rotating her away just a bit. This. And so you can always play with it, depending on what you got going on. Maybe you're a little bit more flexed or you need flexion, then I would add rotation. Or let's say where most people need extension and rotation, I'll extend over and then add rotation to it. 
So this is just the general way that I would start to advise somebody to foam roll their back or their spine. I usually keep it in the thoracic spine, you know, right where the bottom of the rib cage is, all the way up to the top of the back. Uh, I don't want pain. Um, you'll have some soreness at times just from soft tissue or muscles, but no shooting or sharp pain, no numbness, no tingling, none of that. And then we can work in based on what we need, extension, flexion, rotation, into that uh, foam roll routine as well as adding breathing. So you can actually kill a lot of birds with one stone if you know what you're going after. So basically my goal with this is having people have a little bit of a, a, a purpose or direction whenever they're going into stretching or foam rolling or anything like that. Let's target things that we need and things that we need in, in our daily activities. So if you got any questions, let us know. If not, give this a try. Uh, if you're having any pain or discomfort, I would stop and probably go get checked out by uh, some type of professional. Um, but if you have any questions, let us know. If not, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.